Last Sunday was Palm Sunday, and we shared with you the beginning of Jesus' journey to the cross for our redemption. The city was divided about their opinion of who Jesus really was and what his motives were. The ones who believe him hung on his every word and followed him everywhere, but there were others who were looking for a reason to have him executed. Crucifixion was the standard method of the Roman government of that day. Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' twelve disciples, helped Jesus' enemies arrest him. And then Peter, one of his closest friends, denied him three times. The trial was rigged. Even Pilate washed his hands of the whole mess, but not until he had Jesus beaten almost to death. Even while he was on the cross, the thieves on each side couldn't agree why Jesus was being crucified. One agreed with Jesus' enemies that he deserved to die, but the other one believed he was the Son of God, and Jesus told him he would be with him in paradise that very day. Before Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the entire world, there is complete darkness. His own father disowned him while he hung there. When his work on the cross was done, Jesus spoke word only the Son of God could. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. It is finished. After the soldiers made sure that Jesus was dead, two Pharisees, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, who didn't agree with the council's decision to crucify Jesus, asked Pilate if they could bury him in Joseph's burial tomb. They were given permission. They wrapped his body in a linen cloth and placed it in the tomb. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds worth. They wrapped Jesus' body with the spices in strips of linen. This was the Jewish burial custom. The tomb was in a garden and had never been used before. The Sabbath was about to begin. The woman who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and Nicodemus and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. The next day, the chief priests and Pharisees went to Pilate. They told Pilate that Jesus had told everyone while he was still alive that after three days he would rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that Jesus has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate told them to take a guard and make the tomb as secure as they knew how. So they went and secured the tomb by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. After the service, at dawn on Sunday, the first day of week, Mary Mary, Mary the Mary James, and Zoom got ready to go to the tune. They brought spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. On the way, they talked among themselves about how they were going to roll down the way from the address of the tune. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake, and the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolled back the stone that was in front of the tomb and sat on it. He was as bright as lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so frightened that they looked like they were dead. The angel said to the women, Don't be afraid. I know you all looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and say, where he lay? Then go quickly. <laughs> Tell him, friends, he has risen from the dead. 
and is going ahead of you to gallery, then will you see him. Now I told you. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. So the women hurried away, found a tune, afraid yet, filled a story, and ran to tell his disciples. When the women came back from the tomb, they were so excited they told everything to eleven disciples and to all the others. But none of them believed the woman because they seemed like they were talking nonsense. Peter and John, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Both were running, but John outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but didn't go in. Peter, who was behind John, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, John, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. Jesus is alive! Jesus is risen from the dead!